Do you ever find yourself thinking about a franchise and then suddenly, out of the blue, something from said franchise manages to worm its way into your mind and stay there forever and you can't get it out no matter what you do? No matter how hard you try? Because that's me right now with How to Train Your Dragon, the animated film franchise from DreamWorks. And my ever-burning anger for the character of Volka. Valka? Volka? I can't be bothered looking it up. I assume it's Volka. Hiccup's mum. And why would I hate on this character, you might ask? Well, I feel like she's a deadbeat. And nobody, nobody in the film seems to actually take note of that. And so I went on Reddit, as you do, to try to validate my opinions and not feel so alone in my complete and utter disregard for this woman. And what do I find? Not the scorn I was expecting, that's for damn sure. Nope. Instead, I found myself reading post after post after post, comment after comment after comment, of people somehow defending her decisions. Because, I mean, let's just briefly refresh, shall we? She leaves her family, her baby, her son, behind to go and live her life as a dragon whisperer forevermore. I was seeing people bend themselves backwards, twisting themselves into pretzels, trying to explain why she did this in the first place and why it made a lot of sense. Some of them even saying that if they were in her position, they would probably have done the exact same thing. Okay, what? No. And so this whipped me up into even more of a frenzy because I truly just don't get it. I truly don't understand how people can look at this character and the story being told and think it's all good. Okay, so let's just more in depth refresh now, shall we? We did recap it very briefly before, but let's dive deeper into how it all plays out. Okay, so we learned from Volka that all her life, she'd been a little bit different. She tried to convince the rest of the Birkians that dragons were not so bad, that they shouldn't be hunting and killing them. They weren't monsters to be slain, but animals, mere animals. And it seems to me that the rest of the village probably just laughed her off. And I've seen that people have said that she was probably like Hiccup in the first movie, and they all treated her with disrespect, treated like a nuisance, but yeah, nah. She was married to the chief, who clearly loved her a lot. It would take a real stupid Viking, which admittedly is probably not a very high bar in Burke, to intentionally get on the bad side of Stoic the Vast. And so they probably all took their lead from him. I'm thinking they'd all just smile at her, nod their heads when she speaks, and then instantly go back to hunting dragons pretending like she never said anything. It's not quite the same life that Hiccup was leading in the first film. It might have been annoying to her that nobody listened to her, but she wasn't there getting disowned by Stoic for her opinions either. So it's not like her life in Burke was actively terrible, not like Hiccup's was when he considered ditching out in the first movie. And the context was also wildly different too. After all, she had a child. Hiccup was a child. He had no friends and a father who was in a constant state of disappointment with him. That's not exactly something you want to stick around for, right? But she had it all and just left it. And her reasoning was something like, she didn't think Burke could change. Lol. And also she seemed to think that her being around whilst being unable to kill a dragon, even when her son is threatened, would put him in more danger and maybe even teach him bad habits. <laughs> Big yikes there. And so when she was presented with an opportunity to leave, when the dragon kidnapped her, she just decided to never come back. And seemingly, she never even bothered to check on her son. Just thoughts and prayers, I guess, because the only reason she even recognizes him in the cave at all is because of the scar on his face from when he was a baby. So it's clear she wasn't flying back to check up on him, spy on him, see how he was growing up. No, nope. she just leaves and then nothing. But you know what? That's actually fine. I'm not really angry about that part. It's more that the films and the fandom go out of their way to defend it, to ignore what a terrible parent she is. The films themselves, they have these moments where it's like her character sort of acknowledges that she messed up. But then she works herself into a frenzy and chucks out all these scatterbrained and half ass excuses where she pretty much tries to blame Stoic for why she never came back, which feels like deflecting bullshit to me. And then Hiccup seemingly just doesn't care. Stoic doesn't care. Village doesn't care. They're all so thrilled to have her back and so the penny never drops. For me, there's never that acknowledgement of any real wrongdoing. It's just considered uh, a big old misunderstanding. And that kind of pisses me off quite a lot. And then, like I said, it never gets brought up again. Stoic dies, Hiccup never mentions it, and the film ends. She gets integrated into the clan, and that's that. Third film comes along. And I'm not looking for condemnation. I'm not looking for any sort of, oh, I'll never speak to you again, you awful woman, sort of thing. I'm not asking him to tell her to jump off a cliff. I don't want her banished from town to live in disgrace in the hills. But I do find the lack of acknowledgement very baffling. And to me, it makes no sense because the first two films are about the reconnection of family ties and building friendships, of acknowledging wrongdoing and where each person went wrong in that relationship. 
That's the whole arc of Stoic and Hiccup across the films, trying to come closer together and re-establish that father-son bond, with Stoic realising he's completely misjudged his son's bravery, his worth, and his merit. But there's nothing here like that for Volker. The audience is supposed to acknowledge that she made the wrong choice, but not judge her for it, whilst also accepting that all the characters don't really care and are going to move on from it. And so it feels to me like pretty dodgy writing all round. You don't get the payoff where she has to actively work to change, to earn their respect, to earn their trust or whatever, and it feels very lazy. Yes, they're in the honeymoon period of her being found alive after all these years, but I feel like they just squandered the story. And so I dug a little bit deeper to try to find out what the hell went wrong here. Why is this story so weirdly constructed? And how do you have, on the one hand, the interesting dynamic of Stoic and Hiccup, where Stoic strives to become a better parent after so many mistakes? And then on the other hand, have the Volker situation play out like it did. It just didn't make sense. And so, like I said, I did some digging, and apparently she was meant to be the original villain of How to Train Your Dragon 2. And so suddenly so much clicked into place. Because it just makes sense with her story, doesn't it? And also with the setup that she has. She ditches her family after being taken by Cloud Jumper. She has heaps of maps and stuff that she gives to Hiccup, so she probably knew how to return home in the first place, but she chose not to. She's fighting against humans who dislike dragons, the hunters, who aren't really all that different to the OG Burkeans from the first film. And that's how you have to introduce Drago for the third movie. You have him name dropped and referenced by the hunters as their employer. Anyway, she meets Hiccup, she meets Stoic, everybody's happy to see her, just like in the OG. The hunters arrive, maybe she blames Hiccup and Stoic, she thinks it was a setup, maybe they're working with Drago, they're liars, they enslave the dragons. She notices Toothless's little flappy thing, realizes Hiccup did that to him, thinks he's a slave, thinks it's all a trick, and so she leads her alpha dragon to attack Burke, and the events of the film where Stoic dies, and then Toothless beats the alpha, plays out as it normally would. And so, I think, suddenly, when you frame it like that, it does make a lot more sense within the context of her character that we see, and it explains her motivations more. But at the same time, I don't like this either. Losing both parents back to back, it's a bit much to come back from, I think. I think the OG ending had her survive and realize she was wrong, but decides that she never wants to come back and she never wants to see Hiccup ever again. So that would be a very sad ending. One that makes sense based on her characterization and her backstory, but it's one that I don't like, but it does work. Whereas the new version, it feels like they kept a lot of that villain backstory, but remove any of the villain payoff. So you get left in this limbo of being oh, well, you kind of suck, but you're a hero, and we can't acknowledge that you suck, and it just pisses me off. You know, there's, you know, it's just frustrating. I'll just put it like that. It's frustrating, and I hate it, and I'm sick of people not talking about it, so let's talk about it now. But that being said, there's nothing much else to say, so I'll just say, I hate her, I hate her, I hate her. Her character sucks, no thanks. And so with all that being said, these have just been my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think of the character of Volka? Do you think she sucks? Or do you think I've completely overblown this tiny little issue and I'm just misunderstanding everything? I'm honestly curious to hear what you have to say, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.